We're here at the Cincinnati booth at Fabtech, speaking with Dana. Dana, please introduce yourself. Yes, what do you do? Uh, my name is Dana Hayes. I am the laser process development engineer here at Cincinnati Incorporated. Uh, so as a laser process development engineer, uh, my job is to develop the processes by which we can cut metal on our laser uh, fiber lasers. Um, so at Cincinnati, we cut typically aluminum, stainless steel, and carbon steel. Um, but we've also worked with uh, copper, brass, uh, we can cut galvanized steel, armor plate. Um, we really develop processes for a lot of different services and for a lot of different clientele. Okay, tell us about uh, the armor plate kind of jumped out at me. Well, tell us about that. So we have some contracts with some uh, clients who uh, they cut armor plate for like Kevlar vests and things of that nature. So uh, we take the, the armor plate, we cut the design that they they request, and then we actually take it over to our press brakes. Uh, and the press brakes will bend, uh, just put a little bit of a bend in the armor plate so that it will fit closer to the body. Um, but it's of a vehicle, or is it an armor person, plate for the person? For a person. Okay. So, uh, yeah, interesting. The vest they can wear and, and you know be safer. Um, but it was, it was a really cool project to work on. I'm sure it was, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, tell us about what you, that's about what you guys do. What do you do in terms of uh, your, your engineering knowledge is a little bit more than what your uh, college degree was in, right? Right. So, so, so my degree is in optical engineering. Um, I have my bachelor's and my master's in the same same degree, um, both in optical engineering. Uh, I went to Norfolk State University, a historically black college in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, so my education was all about optics, um, which is not exclusive to the eye, as optic might, uh, might sound, right. um, but <laughs> we work with lenses. Um, so actually the first optical engineers may have been opticians. Um, because optics is all about focusing light and your eyeglasses focus the light on the correct part of your eyeball if the lens in your eye doesn't work correctly. Um, so we learned all about lenses and how to space them to get exactly the effect that you want. Um, and that's all you do with a laser. We also learned and built a laser in undergrad. Wow. Um, so that was a really cool experience. Um, so now, as a laser process development engineer, what I do with that is I work on gas pressure, feed rates, and uh, focus in our in our optical cutting head to see or to optimize edge quality and to optimize the cut of the material. Um, and so I'm able to use my education as it regards lasers, uh, as well as a little bit of I don't want to say alchemy, but that's how it feels. <laughs> Um, you know, really determining how to best let the laser interact with the material. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot to more to speed than just how fast can the laser arm go, or absolutely, you know, and, the, and the, the, the amount of gas you have to use and things right. like that, right? So yeah, mechanically, the machine can move. It, it's yeah. our our mechanical engineers have been really great about optimizing performance, optimizing physical speed, like you said, of just the gantry. Yeah. Um, and that's really easy as far as if you're not cutting, you can go as fast as, as physically possible for the weight of the machine. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when you're looking at cutting metal, uh, if you're moving too fast, you won't actually be able to cut the material. The, the laser will lose almost the hold that it has on the material. So uh, my job is to look at gas pressure um, for, uh, for a process using nitrogen or air, you're cooling the, the process and so too much pressure will preclude speeding up. Um, with an endothermic reaction with oxygen, too much gas creates a more volatile reaction um, so you're, you're unable to cut um, with too much gas pressure uh, in, in either way so we have to look at the entire process. Um, it's not simply how fast can the machine move, but with all of these other parts in mind. Um, and of course with that is 
how fast can we get it to cut and get a quality part for our clientele. Um, you know, we have a variety of different people and a variety of different applications. Um, some don't mind, you know, a secondary process and uh, grinding off a little bit of extra material on the bottom and some of them need a pristine cut from the very beginning. So uh, we're in charge of creating the processes so that we get both ends of the spectrum. Uh, and debunk a myth for us. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a five kilowatt laser, the 10 isn't going to cut twice as fast, right? Not necessarily. <laughs> um, so all of the, the different power uh, settings have a different niche. So uh, with our, we have a 15 kilowatt laser that we are working with currently. Okay. Um, and what we found is the niche with the 15 kilowatt is plate mild plate. steel with nitrogen. Um, so typically people are rounding out uh, nitrogen cutting with miles to go around a quarter of an inch. Um, you have been able to cut up to three quarter inch mild steel with a 15 kilowatt with nitrogen. Okay. Um, and so what that does is it clean cuts and you get a cleaner edge. You're not getting an oxidized edge. Right. So um, for people who cut with oxygen, that oxidation you have to grind off. Um, otherwise it doesn't weld properly. Yeah. So this will actually preclude people from having that secondary process. Um, so they can go from the laser to welding, and you know it's a seamless transition at that point. Um, but 15 kilowatts doesn't give you more that much more speed on uh, sheet material. So right. if you're cutting 16 gauge and you know really 10 gauge mild steel and thinner, you're not going to get three times as much speed out of a 15 kilowatt. Yeah. You really you don't need that much power. So um, between myself and you know the apps team as well as our sales engineers, we, everyone is working very diligently to make sure each clientele gets exactly the power that they need. Um, it's not just about making money because at the end of the day, if the clients aren't happy, they won't come back. Um, yeah. and we thrive and really enjoy having our return clients. Um, enjoy being uh, an American-made company, uh, a family-owned company, uh, with all of our enclosures, all of our press breaks being built in Harrison, Ohio. Uh, and so that means, you know, we've got service techs across the, uh, across the country uh, who can come in and, and service the machines, uh, as well as our service team uh, being in Harrison, Ohio, who can, you know, walk everyone through the, their uh, machines, walk them through the software. Um, we have our apps, our apps teams travel the country and, and do actual visits on site and make sure that, again, as an American-made company, we can take care of our clients personally. Yeah.